Hello everyone! Welcome back to Let's Play Super Mario RPG. I'm Dave, you may call me Modon Joe. I got something to confess. Um, as much as I love this game, and as much as I love so many different things about it, um, this portion of the game, not the most memorable to me. It's not the one that I hold dearest. I mean, yeah, we find out about Malo's past and all that good stuff, and then a whole lot of nice, I guess, character development for Malo, but overall, it's not something too, remember too memorable. The dungeon isn't the greatest, the bosses aren't too notable, though they do have one fun thing about them, especially, I mean, the last boss has one fun thing about them. I mean, actually, though, the bosses in this uh, area have some really nice gimmicks that do set them apart, but overall, it's not too memorable. Though I do remember this hidden chest right here that has a frog coin, which is nice, a nice little surprise box, not bad, but, um, you know what, I think we futzed around enough, um, I can't imagine us being able to do too much more, so I guess we're gonna have to progress... Huh, that door's locked. We must need to get past there to progress. Um, well, where where's the key, is the question. Um, that was the thing that, like, like I said, this area's not too memorable to me. It turns out it's right where that, fro that uh, frog coin happened to be. So, here's a bunch of people that I guess work at the palace. This is their sleeping quarters, so, uh... Oh, former... These are unemployed... These guys are unemployed now. Ouch. Um, okay, so yeah, I'll take that uh, key. Um, sorry that you got laid off from the guard position. That has to really suck. Um, ooh, and a flower jar, too. Cool. Um, I wonder why he's giving us a flower jar. Oh, uh, well. Uh, we, can ditch the, we can ditch the able juice. I mean, we don't need five pieces of able juice. And huge egg. Yo, no, no, I will not be making that joke. You know, it, besides, as far as I can tell, that joke has been played out to death by now, so I'm not even, so making that joke would be a twice as awful. Uh, but anyway, um, I think we kind of said, every, uh, done everything we need to in this room, so I guess we'll just have to make our way to that, um, to that center, that locked room, that center room with the egg and all that good stuff, so... Yeah, let's make our way back there, back to the center room. Um, I normally would cut the backtracking, considering we've seen this room enough times, but eh. Huh. Why are you watering an egg? It's an egg, not a plant. Plants, eggs don't drink. They don't absorb anything through their shells. Uh oh. <sighs> Vengeance for that Smilax. Smilax was a lot harder when I was younger. I was surprised how easy it was when I did it this first time. Anyway, since we got a boss coming up, let's switch Rich and Gino, because Gino boost. Why else? And, um, I guess maybe we'll go ahead and take out... Uh, damn. Damn, he's out of reach. I wanted to pu punish him. Oh, well. Oh, the egg wants to play. Sure, it's not like we can do anything else around here. Now we're trapped. <laughs> Alright, uh, boss time, ladies and gentlemen, and the first part of this boss fight should be, uh, pretty simple. I mean, there's not much else that we can do right now, so the egg can't attack us, so I'm just gonna go ahead and Geno boost everyone, because, well, Geno boost. Do I need to say anything? It's that good, ladies and gentlemen, although I... It's really only good if you get the timed attack and you can get the defense boost out of it. That's what makes it good, not needing to heal as much. And, uh, but, you know, sometimes... I guess we'll just have to reapply Geno Boost later. I mean, there's nothing wrong with multiple Geno Boosts on a character, as far as I can tell. How do I keep missing it? Huh, this was a bad day for me, ladies and gentlemen. But, um, that egg pretty much will just crack after a set amount of uh, attacks, and then it'll hatch whatever's inside, so... I'm guessing there is something inside. How else could it talk to us? But, um, you know what? With those missed Geno Boosts, I might as well just, uh, spend a couple turns defending, healing up... Uh, prepping for everything and uh, G making sure that the Gina boost actually gets a defense later on there. There we go, there we go. Uh, another turn cycle where the egg doesn't do anything, a Gina boost here, and we are good to go. Although I that although Gina boosting everyone twice does take up a, a lot of FP. I guess maybe a syrup can hurt right about now. And egg and Mario will then crack the egg thusly. There we go. Hey, it's everyone's favorite transvestite, Birdo. I'm, that is not a joke, ladies and gentlemen. 
But, um, anyway, now we got that, um, remember what they said earlier about, uh, guarding against Birdo? Um, yeah, you gotta actually do a little bit of, uh, defense first, uh, it, that doesn't actually work right off the bat. You gotta attack her a little bit, and then she'll give you the cue when you can start guarding to deflect attacks back at her. So, um, with that all said and done, um, it, eventually, my pass off will, there we go, start punching the, punching the poor woman. That is actually the reason that um, Birdo is apparently a transvestite in the U.S. Because, because well, back in the 8-bit days, uh, back in the late 80s, early 90s, they didn't like the idea of Mario beating up a girl. So, uh, this is actually more famous with Final Fight and Poison, but um, where they did not like the idea of a bunch of tough, tough guys beating up a, a tough girl, but... This actually happened with Birdo as well, where they did not like the idea of men beating up women, so they had, so they changed, they claimed that the man, woman was actually a man dressing up as a woman. So yeah, Birdo, because of that, Birdo and Poison are transvestites in America, and this actually becomes an issue in in uh, one Nintendo Japanese game only game called Captain Rainbow. And now Aunt Birdo is firing the single shots now. The, as you can tell though. The defense, defending against her multi-shots really doesn't do anything uh, defense-wise. It actually pierces defense, which is actually a little annoying. But um, actually all of her attacks seem to pierce defense, d pierce guard, so don't even bother with uh, guarding. So uh, thankfully when she drops those eggs, any, they, those eggs have 10 HP, and once you kill them, they blow up. So anything, any damage, you can even have Peach whack it, whack it with her fan, and it'll still do significant damage to Birdo. But honestly, I like to do the, I like to get a little crazy and uh, hit, use anything that hits multiple enemies, because then I'm dealing twice as much damage. Although it's probably not the best way to do it. Eh, I feel like having fun every now and then. And plus, I do have that screw ring on Mario. I did mention that I went back and picked up the screw ring, right? I forget. But anyway, like I said, defense is the name of the game here. Guard until she fires off an egg. Uh, then uh, guard until she fires off an egg. Yeah, it actually uses guard command. How, how often does that turn up in RPGs, really? Uh, and then, and once that's all said and done, just uh, whack her, whack the egg, and. Whack her, maybe. I mean, if you want to hit her, go ahead. There's no fault in, you know, doing a little extra defense, but I've never been able to pull off a time guard against her regular physical attacks, so have Peach, definitely have Peach guard, and maybe Mario, if you feel like it, but um, overall, those single, once those single angle legs start hitting, they do hit kind of hard, so make sure to heal up from that. Guard as defense as necessary, heal as when necessary. It's the whole standard routine. Really, the trick with what I like about this boss battle is that, you know, they make the guard guard command actually relevant. There's not that many RPGs that do that. The only one I can think of is Mother 3, and that does it because of the uh, little, little something that the Mother series added in the second one. Uh, that one was released in America. Se Mother 2, by the way, is known as that in America. In case you don't know, um, but yes, that, in case you don't know, there is that little bit of a trivia, and, um, well, I'll go over why that's vital, if and when I ever do a Let's Play of Earthbound. I mean, uh, I'll get into my issues with that, doing that later, if it ever comes. If. There's a big if. Huh. And I don't even know why I still carry around that, uh, bad mushroom, but thankfully I do have a firebomb, so um, I guess Birdo, however, is immune to fire. Uh, he never, After all, Birdo never faced fire before. That's actually one thing that kind of surprises me about, uh, su about uh, Super Mario Bros. 2, come to think of it, is um, all of those enemies were just things that Mario dreamed up, and not to mention that game wasn't really originally a Mario game to begin with, but all those things were just things Mario dreamed up, and suddenly... I guess you dream what you know, but then suddenly they come to life and they actually have he has, actually has to deal with them. Uh, uh, whatever, I'm not gonna question it. Uh, questioning video game logic is just like some of the stupidest things you one of the stupidest things you can do sometimes. So uh, I'll just shrug it off and continue onward and let and watch as Peach actually does some reasonable damage to Birdo there. Uh, Birdo, I believe, only has like about. 800 HP, I may be wrong, I may be confusing her for, uh... Ah, oh, there, down Birdo goes. 
Aww, she thinks we're cute. Aww. Uh, don't suck on me. Uh, but, you know what? We took care of Birdo, and we got some coins for our time, and we also get a key! Alright, the second key! So now maybe we can get out of here. Unfortunately, that means we're gonna let the uh, Shy way out of here. Whoa! Hey, hey, no, no fair blowing us off the ledge. I thought I turned you down. Eh. That's the problem, though. There's a, those things will uh, push. You gotta watch out for those fans. Even when, if you turn the one in Monster Town down, it'll still occasionally act up. So, you know, just go ahead and pick a fight with them. Switch at, and uh, do whatever. I'm gonna switch back to Bowser cause, just because I'm dealing with. Uh, I'm done with bosses for a little bit, a little bit, and you know what? We'll progress onward. And huh? There's a note on the door. The door's locked. Hmm. All right. Yeah, let's see what that note. King Nimbus is resting in bed. No running in the halls. Wait a minute. If no one's allowed in the castle, why do you even post that note? I mean, you even fired all the former staff, so it's not like anyone's gonna see that note. Except for intruders, and even then you're just gonna kill them. Or capture them, or something. Okay, let's bash on a door rescue. Malo! He's not bedridden! It's a lie told by a big... by a woman with big breasts! That's what... Uh, I'm not gonna be harping on that joke. I mean, although, it's not like the developers actually put Jiggle Physics in this game. <laughs> I mean, this game was made well before the Dead or Alive series, so it's not like the developers actually took the time to animate uh, Valentina's breasts, right? Yeah, well... I guess that's going to be the end of the episode with Shy Away uh, going to rat us out. So until next time, everyone, make sure you know your way. Make sure you have a map of where you need to go. I'm Dave. Take care.